brushing our hair is something that all of us do pretty much every day. Um, whether we are a boy or a girl, have long hair or short hair, it is something that we all do. And many people find it difficult to do. So when we brush our hair, let's not forget that we are making sound. So for people who are sensitive to sound and auditory information, when we brush our hair, we're creating sound, we're creating vibrations, which can be very difficult for some people. You can try different kinds of brushes. So there's some brushes that are really hard and some people might prefer those and they can feel them on their head and running through their hair. Some people might prefer the softer ones, which are less, you can feel less as you're brushing your hair. They also are more likely to create less vibration, so they're a little bit quieter when we're using them. So think about the type of brush that you use so that then you can relate that to someone's auditory needs, but also tactile, so the way that it feels on their head. When we brush our hair, let's not forget that we are then all of a sudden really aware of our body. We need to be able to position our hand to know where our head is to be able to brush our hair. So we need to use our proprioceptive sense. Some people find that sensory system quite difficult to coordinate. So being able for me to lift up my hand and know where my head is to brush my hair can be quite difficult. So maybe I need to think about brushing my hair in front of a mirror or in front of a reflection where I can see what I'm doing. Often we might just give someone a hairbrush and they see us brushing our hair quickly without the use of a mirror but we've had plenty of time to learn and to build up where about in space we need to move our arms to be able to brush our hair. So think about your proprioceptive sense. When you're brushing your hair also you are then aware of your hand because you're holding the brush and you're also really aware of the top half of your body. So think about people who are hypersensitive to proprioceptive sense, so they're already receiving too much information or processing too much information from their proprioceptive sense. In their everyday lives, we might see them avoiding that. So we might see them avoiding being near other people or wearing, they might prefer to wear loose clothing rather than fitted clothing because when they're wearing fitted clothing, they're really aware of their arms more than they need to be. Also, one other sensory system that I want to mention relating to brushing our hair can be our vestibular sense. So if we are brushing our hair, we're in more control about how, our, how much our head moves. If we're brushing someone else's hair for them, it's more than likely we will use one hand to kind of hold their head while we brush with the other hand. Now for some people this might mean that we are accidentally moving their head more than is in, enjoyable for them at that moment in time. So our vestibular sense, don't forget, is when our head moves, that fluid is moving around. So if we're brushing someone's hair for them, just think about is there a way that we can support their head without the need of us holding it ourselves? We really want to encourage them to be able to brush their hair for them. So maybe if they, if you can, if you can get them to do that, if you can teach them how to brush their hair, it's going to be easier for them to do anyway. They will prefer to brush their own hair because they're more in control of how much vestibular information they're receiving at that moment in time. So as you can see, brushing our hair still involves quite a few sensory reasons as to why someone with a sensory processing disorder might find it difficult to do that activity. So have a think about some of those and try and break down, relating to the person that you support, which sensory system do you think overrides and therefore support that one first when you're looking to help them to learn to be independent at brushing their hair.